Has he been good to you? Is that anybody's testimony? Better than good. Better than you've been to yourself. Has God been good to anybody? Has God been good to anybody? Come on, has God been good to anybody? If he has been good, then you ought to make some noise. If God has been good, you ought to make some noise. If God has been good, you ought to make some noise. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You ought to have something to say if God has been good to you. Has he been good to anybody in here? Has God opened any doors for anybody in here? Has God made a way for anybody in here? Has God healed anybody in here? Amen, amen, amen. God has been good. Bible says, Lord, you are good and your mercies endure forever. Amen, amen. Great is our God. We thank him for the blessing and the privilege of being called his children. And with that blessing and privilege comes his activity in our lives. And God just has a way of doing and working in our lives that we just can't explain. And all we can say to it is God is just good. He's just good. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke's gospel. Luke's gospel in the first chapter, there are some verses there I want to read for us, a very familiar narrative of scripture. We are in the season of Advent where we are celebrating the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The season of Advent, the beginning, we are celebrating that in this Christmas season. And so the birth narratives of Jesus Christ are so rich with information, rich with spiritual insight. God speaks to us. This, these stories never get old. They never get old. They always have something fresh to say to us. And so this morning we'll look now at Luke chapter number 1, beginning with verse number 26. There you will find these words. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. I want to use these verses this morning. I want to talk from the subject, how favor works. How favor works. A couple of weeks ago, a sociology professor at Georgetown University by the name of Michael Eric Dyson released his latest book. The title of the book is called Jay-Z, Made in America. 
Michael Eric Dyson has taken the life of hip-hop icon Jay-Z and intellectualized his life, studied his life, and has taught college-level courses on the life of Jay-Z. He has taken the celebrity of Jay-Z and broken it down, taken some of his lyrics and shown us the genius behind the man Jay-Z, former crack dealer, now media mogul, billionaire, philanthropist, social justice champion, all of these things about Jay-Z, the celebrity. We all are enamored, I would say not all, but perhaps the vast majority of us are enamored with celebrity on some level. That we often flip through magazines and after all we are attracted to the faces and the the, the clothing and the material things and the testimony, the records of what they've accomplished, their feats, celebrity, intrigues us all. And don't get so holy and righteous here that you can't admit the fact that sometimes you look at some of those pictures and just wonder what it'd be like to spend 10 minutes in the shoes of Jay-Z. What would my life be like if I had what they had? If I had the experience and the privilege and the opportunity to vacation in places, exotic places, to hang out on yachts on a Tuesday afternoon while everybody else is grinding at work. I'm sipping on something. Scantily clad in the middle of nowhere with the sun beaming down on me. Yeah, you wondered, what is that like? But there is another side of celebrity that we often don't realize, and that is, what is the cost to have that life? We love the glitz and glamour, but we want them to keep the gloom and the doom. That here in this passage of scripture in the birth narrative of Jesus Christ here in this account where the angel appears to Mary what is on center stage is this word favor the angel tells Mary Mary do not be afraid for God has found favor with you and so when we look at this we are looking now at this term favor which is God's undeserved blessing God's pleasure, his unique and special attention. And I tell you that we toss favor around and we use that word, but I bet we don't really totally understand what the word means. We talk about how I'm blessed and highly favored, and we associate favor with nothing but good stuff. But here in Mary's, Mary's experience, here, we see that there's some other stuff that comes with favor as well. I'm not trying to negate the fact that you have favor, but I want you to appreciate favor on an even deeper level. Can I, can I, can I walk us through this thing for a little bit this morning? Can I, can I use Mary and help us appreciate how favor works in your life? Because somebody in here is thinking that I don't know what it is to have favor because I've never had good things in my life, but I promise you favor is still at work. Because as bad as it is right now, it could be worse. As hard as it is right now, it could be harder. And the only reason why it's not harder is because of favor. The only reason why it's not worse is because of favor. The first thing that I want to uh, raise for us out of this me message about how favor works is this, that favor has its own timing. Favor operates, and it doesn't operate according to our own timetable. You don't believe me? Look at what is happening here in the text. Look at the sequence here. Mary is a young adolescent girl, young teenage girl, and the Bible tells us that she's in a, in a season to call betrothal. That is, that she is engaged to be married. Now, culturally, in this time now, that a woman, before she's not to have known any man before she gets married. That means then that she, her body is to be untouched. And when she gets married, it's not until her wedding night that she has the experience of intimacy. And you all know how, how it goes, right? But, 
that it ain't supposed to happen until she gets married. But some kind of way, we know what kind of way, but Mary is betrothed to be married, not yet married, but already pregnant. She's already pregnant, obviously, and the, and, and the angel tells her, you have found favor with God. That she is supposed to be married, getting married, not yet married, but already pregnant. And if she's pregnant before married, that marriage, that means that she's a woman with no honor. And if she's a woman with no honor, she is worthy of death. And so here is a woman whose life is at risk because she has no honor, and yet the angel calls her favored. I'm telling you that God has something to do with the timing of things that happens in our lives. And you thought that it was bad timing, but it was just favor. You thought that the timing didn't make sense, but it made all the sense in the world to God. Because you see, favor can be disruptive. Favor doesn't care about what your timetable is always. That when God wants to bless us, sometimes it looks like it's a burden rather than a blessing. Sometimes the blessing feels more like brokenness, but yet and still it is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. We see God does not always bring order as we know it. God doesn't always operate in our lives according to the sequence that worked out in our own logic. Sometimes we thought that God would show up when we think he should show up that we have compartmentalized our lives, we have put things in place, we've written down our plans, we've checked off our boxes, and we have told God, God, at this time, this is where you put in promotion. Right here, God, this is where you put car. God, right here, you put house. God, right here, you put spouse. God, right here, you put dog. God, right here, you put the first child. Then right here, God, you put the next promotion. Then, God, you put boat. Then you put this, you put that. But God might come in and God might come in and say sickness. He may say foreclosure. He may say pink slip. He may say divorce. He may say unemployment. He may say heartache. He may say hardship, but still have all the other stuff in the plan. But he's got his own sequence. Favor brings disorder so that God can rearrange our lives. And in the rearrangement, we can't help but prioritize him and depend on him. Look at Mary's life here, that this favor on her life puts her in a place of danger, and she has no choice but to trust God. How many times have you found yourself in a season of disarrangement or disarray in your life where God has rearranged and altered your course and your course being altered, you're now trying to figure out what is God up to? And I tell you that God is still up to something and it's called favor. But favor doesn't always look like sunshine. Sometimes favor looks like thunder and lightning. Sometimes favor looks like heartache and pain. Sometimes favor looks like struggle, stress, and strife. In fact, Mary wouldn't have chosen this for her life. Sometimes favor is not what you would choose for yourself. I know that if you had to script what favor would look like on your life, your life would look totally different from the way it looks right now. I know that if you could pick favor for yourself, you wouldn't be driving what you're driving right now. If you could pick favor, your ugly sweater right now would look different from the way it looks right now. If you could pick favor, your house would look different. If you could pick favor, don't say your spouse would be different because that ain't that's not a part of the process. But if you could pick favor for yourself, your life some things would be different but you see favor makes decisions that we would not make for ourselves but these decisions are the best decisions that's why the bible says that all things work together for the good of those that love god and who are called according to his purposes that god makes some choices and decisions that you wouldn't make for yourself but they have to be made nonetheless it had to be this way yielding to or accepting God's favor could lead to suspicion ridicule and death but nonetheless still this was the way that God wanted 
I don't know what season you find yourself in this year, this Christmas, this point, this, this time, this period. I don't know where you are, but I can assure you that still it is a season of favor. Everything doesn't look right. All the boxes aren't checked off. Everything is not lined up the way you envisioned it. But this is how God wants it. And watch God do what only God can do. Christmas, you see. Christmas is definitely, it's a season of giving. Gets us all festive and all of that stuff. People know, you know, my kids know. Christmas is my favorite time of the year. It is, but Christmas is about putting aside our human reputation and accepting his divine revelation, even when it doesn't make sense. That the Christmas narrative is about yielding myself over to God. Because God has chosen to do something that I would not have chosen for myself. Can I go on a little further? That favor, favor has its own timing and also favor has its own selection criteria. Mary was God's choice. God chose Mary. Not jo you know, Joseph chose Mary to be his wife, but God chose Mary for something greater than the wife of Joseph. And Mary was a peasant girl. She didn't come from royalty. She didn't come from great pedigree and good stock. She didn't come from money. She came from the country. She came from the hood. She came from the ghetto. She came from the outskirts of town. She came from the other side of the tracks. She came from the place where good stuff don't come from, but yet God still chose her. This is a matter of God's divine selection, which shows that God is in total control. So when you have favor on your life, you don't owe nobody no explanation. That God looks at the heart, but man looks on the outside. People try to size you up and tell you what you can and can't be and where you can go and where you can't go and who you can be and who you can't be and who you can be with and who you can't be with. But that's not how favor works. Favor doesn't ask for your permission. Favor doesn't look at your criteria. Favor doesn't look at your boxes. Favor doesn't look at your application process. Favor does not look at your vetting process. Favor says that God says, this is who I want, and this is who I will use, and this is who I will take. Favor is God's grace on display. I'm telling you, favor is about what you don't deserve, but what God gives anyhow. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. And don't ever get it twisted that what you have has nothing to do with you, but everything to do with God. Where you live has nothing to do with your credit history and the way that you walk and all your health has nothing to do with your insurance plan and your diet, but it has everything to do with the grace of God. That God chooses us and so his grace is amazing. His grace is amazing because I don't deserve what I have I shouldn't be here right now but thanks be to God that he has decided and he has chosen me and he has blessed me the way that he has and so I don't know about you but I'm tired I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm done I'm done trying to justify why I have what I have, how I got to where I got, because I don't owe you the explanation. All I got to say is it is the favor of God that God looked beyond all of my faults and God chose me and used me and he can do the same thing for you, that God has favor on your life in your darkness, in your mess, in your drama, in your pain, in your suffering, in your heartache, in your weakness God still will use you just as you are that God chooses us for a specific reason that in his choosing look what's happening here don't miss this he chooses a young girl who has never known a man and yet it's in her womb that he wants to place the greatest gift ever known to man that God would pick and choose a virgin womb. 
which means that God wants to pick the untainted and untouched area in some of our lives, and that's where he wants to do his work. That God chooses to work in a space and place where you have no previous experience. God will use you in places and spaces where you have no prior knowledge. Mary has never known a man before, and yet God has deposited himself there. So don't be ashamed and don't be afraid when you feel like God is doing something in you and you don't have any experience for it. Don't feel ashamed and don't feel overwhelmed when you feel like God is moving you into a place and you're saying, I have never done that before. I've never been there before. I've never seen that before. That's never been done before. I don't have enough money for it. I can't do this. I don't have the experience. But favor says, yes, you can. Favor says, yes, you will. Favor says because this is how I want it favor says I know you didn't do it I know you've never been there I know you never studied it I know you've never seen it before but favor says it can and it will be done that God looks for that space in your life that has been dormant for so long that part of you that you didn't even realize was there that potential that God wants to wake up that God wants to start planting seeds. That's how favor works. Favor starts turning over stones that you've never turned over before. Favor puts you on a career path that is totally out of left field. Favor will allow you to go and get one degree doing one thing and have you doing your life's work in something totally different. Favor will put you in a place of leadership long before anybody else ever knew you were coming. Favor will bless the labor and the works of your hands, even though you don't know how you got there. Favor will open up doors for you that nobody could open but God. Favor will have you in positions and you will look up and don't know how you got there and then you nervous because you scared somebody might find out. Favor will put you in places that you never saw yourself being in and favor will wake up stuff in you that you never knew you had. How many of y'all working jobs right now? You don't know how you got there. How many are in positions and places right now and you didn't know you had it in you? Some of y'all doing some stuff, doing some things, and your friends looking at you like, what? Where did this come from? Some of y'all doing some stuff. Go ahead, Marvin. I understand the testimony. He ain't a fresh shame because there was a time when he would never be in this place, but favor has touched a spot in his heart, in your heart, in my heart, and doing a work that only God can do. Stop sitting there looking at me with your arms folded. Don't worry about your ugly sweater. It's ugly anyway. Give God praise for his favor because you know that it was nobody but God. Favor. Favor has its own selection criteria. Listen this. As long as you stay a virgin, you'll never reproduce. As long as your womb stays closed up and cut off from God, God never gets out of you what he desires. And so we've got to be willing to yield every corner of our lives over to God, knowing that God can do something special and spectacular. Can I say something else about favor? Favor, favor looks beyond us. See, favor, you thought that you telling everybody about the favor of God and everything, you act like favor ran out with you. We make favor be just about us. Oh, let me tell you how the Lord blessed me. Oh, I, didn't, I knew my credit was all jacked up and everything, but the bank called me. I said, y'all for real? I hurried on down and got my keys before they found out. Favor, we... we Favor, I married up. I don't deserve her. There's no way in the world. I don't know how I got her. Every night I'm looking at her. I'm holding on tight because I don't want nobody to steal her from me. Favor, I don't know. I don't know. I don't deserve this, but I'm so glad the Lord gave it to me. You running around telling everybody I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm favored. I'm favored. I'm favored. Oh, I thank the Lord for his favor. Oh, it shouldn't have been me, but I'm so glad that the Lord did it with me. The Lord blessed me. The Lord has favored me. The Lord has favored me. The Lord has favored me but when God favored Mary he wasn't thinking about Mary by herself 
God was telling Mary, Mary, Gabriel said, Mary, the Lord has found favor with you. Do not be afraid for what you are carrying is a gift. And what you carry is not just for you, but for the entire world. So now, while you're celebrating God's favor, I want you to ask the deeper question, God, who else is this for? That hurts, don't it? it, it that hit a little different right there. You want to tell everybody how the Lord blessed you. But what if the Lord said, I blessed you, but somebody else ought to be blessed by this blessing. The Lord gave you a new job, paying you more money. Do you think that all that money is for you? You, you, got, you got the money to spend before you get the first check. You already out there. Been, soon as they call you and made you the offer, you went down to the car dealership. I can't be driving this at this position. Oh, no, I can't be VP driving my line car. I can't be VP driving my secretary car. I can't be VP driving the receptionist ride. After all, I, 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 you know, I, I can't be VP still riding the bus. But favor, favor goes beyond us. We see the angel speaks of what is to come in Mary's life. You will be with child. You will give birth. You will be great. You may experience favor now, but what you see in the now is only a glimpse. Being chosen was a sign of favor, but favor had a complete work. So you got to be willing to allow favor to run its complete course, which means then that what God starts in you, it does not end in you. And though what God, don't mistake what God started in you as being the ultimate blessing, because the real blessing is not what happens in you, but what happens because of you. The real blessing is how other people get blessed by you and through you. The real blessing is when God is able to elevate somebody else through your elevation. So I'm telling you, don't squander the favor of God. Don't squander the grace of God. Don't squander the blessing of God. Don't squander the favor of God in your life. That if God is blessing you, that means that God wants to bless somebody else. That if God did it for you, that means somebody else ought to be able to say, I thank Thank God for my brother or my sister. I don't know where you are in your life, and I don't know what God is doing in you right now, but if you found a new blessing, stop telling everybody how the Lord blessed you, but add on to that. Now let me bless you. Let me do this. What is God trying to do with you? What is God trying to do through you? How is God going to use you in this new season of your life? You were crying all them tears last week about how you needed a break through now your breakthrough is here and stop your shouting long enough to realize that God wants you to be a blessing to somebody else stop shouting and crying your tears about how the Lord did it and turn that thing around pick yourself up and get to work and be a blessing to somebody else that's how favor works that favor don't stop just with us God's favor is about somebody beyond you always. You know what he's saying? But I struggled with cancer for so long, and the Lord finally healed me. Yeah, the Lord finally healed me, but somebody else still struggling with cancer. And somebody at the least, they need to know that what God did for you, he can do for them as well. And so, yeah, you may have gotten healed, but you ought to be testifying and telling everybody it wasn't them grapes and berries that healed you. It wasn't your insurance plan that healed you, but it was the God of heaven who healed you. In fact, I'm going to hold your hand in your treatments just like somebody had to hold mine. How many times have you gone back to the place where the Lord delivered you from? Sometimes we got to go back to tell somebody this is what it can look like it won't always be this way God brought me out and he brought me out that I could come back and we gonna walk out together that's what favor does favor favor don't stop with you but let me just mess with you one more time one more time one more time favor is about the who 
and not the how. Look at the conversation between Mary and the angel. The angel said, Mary, you found favor with God. Lord's going to do something with you. God's going to touch you in a place you've never been touched before. You're going to have this child, and he's going to be great. He's going to do great things, and you are going to be that vessel for this child. Mary says, but how can this be? Gabriel says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Mary doesn't doubt that it will be. She just questions, how will it be? It's, it's, she says, Mary doesn't argue with Gabriel about, no, I don't believe it. I ain't buying it. That ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen to me. That's not the argument. The question is, but how, Gabriel, will this happen? How will this happen? And Gabriel doesn't give her the process. Gabriel doesn't tell her about the science. Gabriel doesn't give her a lesson in biology. Gabriel just tells her that the Holy Spirit will do it. Y'all missing it. Gabriel doesn't give her the ins and the outs. Gabriel doesn't give her the chemistry behind the thing. Gabriel doesn't give her the sequence. Gabriel doesn't give her the process. Gabriel doesn't even give her the timing. Gabriel doesn't give her the anatomy lesson. Gabriel just says the Holy Spirit will come upon you. How many times have you asked the Lord because you thought what it took for it to happen? You thought that it was based on what the doctor said. You thought that it was based on what the financial planner said. You thought that it was based on what the counselor said. You thought that it was based on what your homeboy said. You thought it was based on what Dr. Phil said, what Oprah said, what Dyson said, what Jay-Z said, what the rest of them folks said. You thought that it was based on their terms, but God God said that I will take care of it. That stop worrying about how it happens and just know who can make it happen. Stop worrying about how and just start giving praise for the who. Stop worrying about how it came about. Just know that God will do it. Stop worrying about when it will take place. Just know that God will make it happen in his own time, in his own way. God will show up and when he shows up, he'll never be late. He'll show up right on time because he is an on-time God. That when we have favor on our lives, we don't have to worry about all the ins and the outs. You just got to know that God will do it. In fact, after God does it, people going to ask you how. Don't get caught up in trying to explain it. How did you get that house? Just tell them the Lord did it. They want to know how did you get that job? Just tell them the Lord did it. They want to know how did you end up marrying her? The Lord did it. They want to know how did you get in that crib? The Lord did it. They want to know how did you pass the test? God did it. They want to know how did you get this? Tell them God did it. They want to know how did you come out of that thing? Tell them God did it. They want to know how are you able to keep your head up in this time right now? Tell them it is nobody but God. Can I get a witness in here? Where the folk at who can say that God did it? That I came out because God did it. I walked through it because God did it. I lived there because God did it. I'm not who I used to be because God did it. I'm not who I used to be because God did it. That's what favor looks like. That it was nobody but God. And if you don't believe me, all you got to do is look in the scriptures that it was nobody but God working on the behalf of his people. You don't believe me. You just called some folk in the question. You ought to ask Noah, Noah, how were you able to survive the flood? And Noah tell you, God did it. You go and talk to Moses and say, Moses, how did you get out of Egypt? Moses will tell you, God did it. You talk to the Hebrew boys and say, how did y'all survive the fiery furnace? They'll tell you, God did it. You talk to Ezekiel and say, how did you make them bones come to life? And he'll tell you, God did it. It. You can talk to the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they'll tell you, God did it. You can talk to blind Bartimaeus and say, man, how can you see again? He'll tell you, God did it. You can talk to them 10 lepers and they'll tell you, God did it. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know where. All I can tell you is that it was nobody but God. 
favor is God's business. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God can do. Christmas gets me all giddy inside because it ain't about what kind of gifts I'm going to get from other folk, but it just reminds me that God can do anything that he wants to do. God can do it any way that he wants to do it, and God can do it when I least expect it. Suddenly, God can turn my life around. Suddenly, God can make me whole again. Suddenly, God can move in my experience. Suddenly, God can do only what God can do. And it's called favor. Let's thank God today. Let's thank God today. Let's thank God for his favor. Listen, when you read this narrative, you're not reading it just to learn about what God did with Mary. But when you read this narrative, this narrative ought to tell you about what God can do with us. So as you see, Mary represents all of us. Mary represents the weak. She represents the uneducated. 